video for those of you that didn't hear about um the process the journey of me purchasing my first investment property so i'm just going to be answering some q a questions let me know if you have any questions that i didn't answer in the comment section down below um and i'll hopefully will be answering it in your next in the next video so stay tuned let's get started so my name is Miriam Dow. Um, I actually live in New Jersey. And just a little bit of information about myself. I'm a senior marketing executive. I do commute to New York City. So I reside in New Jersey, work in New York. And I did purchase our uh, family residence uh, four years ago, back in 2017. So my husband and myself, we had two kids at the time. We purchased our first home back in 2017 in New Jersey. And that's when I got the real estate bug. How did I get started into real estate? So I do come from a family of entrepreneurs. Um, I do have family members that own real estate back home. I'm originally from West Africa, Mali. So my mom does have some real estate property back home. And that's where, you know, I get to see where her return on investment looks like. Um, and it just became interesting to me. So when I bought our home that we live in at the time, when we purchased this home, I didn't really know too much about it. I just knew I wanted to get out of New York. I didn't want to raise my, my kids in the city. I wanted to move to kind of a suburban area. And I read this book. The name of the book is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I think his name is, I might butcher this. I'm going to write it down below. <laughs> but I think his name is Robert Ziaski. So I read that book and that kind of was like an eye opener for me. Um, it kind of changes your mindset about assets and liabilities. So after I read that book, I read his second book, Cash Flow Quadrant, and then I read another book, and then I just I just got the real estate book, okay? And then I started listening to podcasts on Bigger Pockets. I became a member, I'm a pro member actually. So send me a message, Marion Dow, um, on Bigger Pockets if you if any of the viewers are Bigger Pocket members. But basically, I just started interacting on the forums, you know, um, you know, asking questions, and I would get a lot of feedback from real estate agents. And from other investors and they would you know give me some tips and tell me kind of push me in the direction that i need to be in and i've been doing that for the past three years next question how did i choose the market that i chose to invest in so at first i was actually really interested in jacksonville florida um just because the property taxes are really low um there's a high rental demand you know a lot of people a lot of senior citizens um you know once they retire a lot of them move to florida and retire there. There's a lot of headquarters, big company headquarters um, in Jacksonville, Florida. So as I was doing my research and I was speaking to real estate agents on Bigger Pocket, um, the forums and stuff like that, I was just learning. And Jacksonville, Florida just kept coming up. The homes are affordable. Um, but then I thought, you know what, this is my very first property. Do I want to get to a point where I'm investing in property out of state, of course, because at the end of the day, you need to have a, di a diverse portfolio. You, it's not really smart to invest in only one state. Um, so do I want to get to a point where I'm investing out of state and stuff like that? Of course, but since it was my first property, I'm the type of person I need to be hands-on. Um, I want to be a part of every single process. When I say every single process, I want to be there when they're picking the doorknobs, when they're painting the, the, the shelves, like, I want to be there throughout the entire process. So that's the type of person I am. So I knew purchasing this property in Florida where I really don't know anyone in Florida. So I don't have anyone that could just be my second pair of eyes that I trust. I was just like, you know what? I think the best thing for me to do is purchase a property nearby where I can actually go, see it, touch it, feel it, you know, sit in it. So that's what I did. And so one day I was actually watching a Bigger Pockets video on YouTube. Shout out to Brandon Turner. He's uh, the host on the podcast of Bigger Pockets. He's written some really nice books. So basically, he was doing a video and he was mentioning each high cash flow city for each state. So for each state, the highest cash flow city is what he was talking about. Um, and so when he came to New Jersey, he mentioned the he mentioned Trenton. And light bulbs started going on with your girl's head because I was looking at a lot of properties where I live here in Bergen County and they were just not in my budget. They were really expensive. So I started looking further out, further out, but I wasn't really too familiar and I didn't really know any investors in New Jersey. So I just, I needed some guidance. So I felt like everything happened for a reason because as I'm sitting here trying to search 
like where where am I gonna buy this property? I saw this video come up because I'm subscribed to the Bigger Podcast channel on YouTube and it came up on my phone and it said something about highest cash flow cities of each state. So I looked it up, I, I, like I watched the video immediately. It was posted like on a Saturday, I watched it on Saturday. And when he came to New Jersey, he mentioned Trenton. Immediately I go to realtor.com, I type in Trenton, New Jersey, um, which is actually in Mercer County. So it's about an hour and 20 minute drive from me, not too far, um, you know, not bad at all, I could do that drive. And I started looking at properties and I started to see these are properties that I can actually afford. And just because, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic, um, so I'm actually on furlough, so I haven't returned to work yet. And trying to get a lender to, you know, loan you money to buy a house when you really don't have any income coming in, you know, like I'm not, although I'm still employed, I don't have a steady income coming in right now. That's how they see you for all of us people who are on furlough um, in the middle of this pandemic. So, um, it was getting hard. Like I spoke to something two different lenders, a lender that I have in my current house and another lender, and they were all just getting me to run around. It's not possible. You don't have really, you really don't have no income and all this stuff. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna buy this property cash. So the properties in Trenton were affordable and I was really happy about that. Um, so yeah, that's how I found the market that I ended up buying in. How did I find my realtor? So what I did was I saw a property that I was interested on realtor.com. And they usually have like an information bar where you enter in your name, your number, your email address, and um, you know, the real estate agent of that particular property would give you a call. When I tell you, I kid you not, I click submit and my phone was ringing within seconds. When I say seconds, within like five to 10 seconds, my phone was ringing. And it was an unknown number, of course, I didn't know the number. It was like one of those like collect call numbers, I think. Or was it like a New Jersey number? I don't know, but I picked up the call. And it was a representative from Realtor.com saw that I just um, submitted an inquiry that I was interested in a property. She did let me know that that particular property was no longer available. Um, but what she did was her job is to basically connect me with the real estate agent that's local in the area that can also go ahead and help me with, you know, the property that I'm looking for. So she got some back information. And what I asked her is if she could please connect me with a real estate agent that is also an investor. Cause it's one thing to work with a real estate agent who help people buy primary residences, but it's another thing to work with a real estate agent who is also an investor. Cause they know what to look for. You know, they know what's gonna give you that return on investment. And maybe they'll take you to a place that's in a high cash flow area. So that's what I was looking for. Someone that could also guide me just because it's my first time. I'm not familiar with the market. Um, and I only moved to New Jersey from New York like four years ago, like, and I'm still in New York, like twice a week, every week. So um, I'm still like, although I love New Jersey, it's totally different. It's, it's, in my opinion, so much better to raise your kids in Jersey than in New York. So raising my kids in New York was not an option for me. So um, I just wasn't having it. So I'm still really like, new when it comes to New Jersey. Like I don't really know much about these counties and how these things work and basically you cross the street, you're in a whole different town. It's still very new to me. So I wanted to make sure I was working with someone that's local, but also was an investor because when you're an investor, you just look at things differently. And I'll get into that as I answer these questions. The representative connected me to my real estate agent. Her name is Layla Tabaj. Hey Layla, if you're watching this video, I'm definitely gonna put her um, contact information in the comment bar below. She's very well informed. She answered all my questions. And when I tell you I'm a tedious person, I could be very needy. She was really, really good with answering my questions, giving me advice. Um, and she had investment properties in Mercer County as well. So it was just like God sent. It was God sent. And we instantly connected. Our personalities mesh very well. You know, she was giving me her advice. She would give me her opinion. And it just, the really, like, it worked. She's my go-to and I still text her now when I have like questions and she's given me so many referrals, like contractors, inspectors, like, you know, I even had a little pest problem in the property. So she gave me like a someone who helped her in her property. So she, if you're buying a, per a property in South Jersey, she's just the agent, like she's that agent and she's a woman. <laughs> so. Who run the world girls okay <laughs> let's go back in i spoke to layla on saturday 
and we were on the phone for maybe 45 minutes to an hour and I let her know what my criteria was, what my budget was, you know, how, um, what I plan to do with the property, let her know that it's going to be a rental property and let her know the kind of neighborhoods I'm looking at and I don't know too much. So she's basically educating me throughout the process as well. We did that phone call and she basically put me on a portal. So what that was is every day she, it's like an automated system. It has all my criteria, the homes within the budget that I'm looking for, the bedroom criteria, the neighborhood and stuff like that, um, the different towns that I was interested in. And I get sent a list of homes every day. I'm getting like 50 homes, sometimes 30, sometimes 20 but like a lot of homes sent to me. And I basically go through the list. Some of them are two bedrooms, some of them are three bedrooms, some of them are really tiny, some of them are high in price, some of them need a lot of work, some of them don't. Um, so, you know, I just go through the properties, the one that I'm interested in, I usually email her back um, or we can communicate through, through the portal. So I'll let her know, hey, I really like this one. And she'll give me more information on it. Like, hey, I just spoke with the agent. They actually have an offer already, that property. Um, or she'll let me know like, hey, this property, um has an oil tank below like one of the properties i was really interested in had an oil tank below and we ended up not going with it and i'm kind of happy i did because i didn't want my first investment property to be that kind of headache i mean that could have been just 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 bad it could have been bad bad vibes and I'm, I'm glad we didn't go with that so that's what the portal was for and this was very fast i'm a very fast paced person i like to get in get things done when i have my eye on something like when something is like when I tell myself I'm gonna do something and I start like it's all I can think about so I don't think that's healthy <laughs> like when I say it's all like I'm thinking about it at night as I'm taking a shower as I'm brushing my teeth as I'm feeding my kids as I'm making my bed in the morning as I'm making breakfast as I'm making dinner so it's like in order for me to move on I need to like get it done that's just the type of person I am even when we purchased this house here I saw it I wanted it I want the fastest clothes and that's how it was with this. So I spoke to her on Saturday. Um, she sent me a list of homes within maybe like two, three hours. So I reviewed, and she sent me a lot of homes. I think she sent me like 58 homes. So I reviewed all those homes one by one, went in, looked at the property, looked at the comps of the property. And I was just like doing things, you know, I'm, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I'm trying to do as much due diligence as I can. Cause at the end of the day, I'm not trying to waste her time either. I'm looking at properties that we think that we get under market value so it's kind of basically she's giving me homework this is the criteria these are the home, the homes that came up that are in a, uh, that are available and she's sending me real-time property so some of these properties hit the market that same day that she sent me so that was Saturday I sent I spent the remainder of my Saturday reviewing the properties I spent all day Sunday reviewing the properties and I came up with a few properties that I liked so then I emailed her Sunday night and Monday morning, I met her like I think 12 noon, we met at the first house on Monday. So within two days, I met her, we were at the first house. We um, looked at three properties that particular day, the first day that we met. So that's how fast I roll when I say like, when I start something, it has to get done. Like tunnel vision, that's all I can see, think, breathe, eat. So I, it needs to get done because it's not healthy the way I process. So it had to get done. That's that. So the next question was, how many different offers did I place? I actually placed the home on four offers. So the first day I met her, it was a particular property that I was really interested in. Um, and it was an auction property. It was at a really good price. And what I really liked about this property, it was in, um, it was not too far from, an, I think, a, a, a popular university in New Jersey. So I, th I thought, great, like I could rent out the rooms instead of renting it out by house. You could make more money by renting it out by rooms. Um, and I know that just because both my little brother, when he went to college, he was in a house basically across the street from the college and the, he was renting out a room. And same thing with my sister, she goes to college now um, and she's renting it out by room. So I know those investors who rent out by room to college kids, they can, they be making bank. I mean, it's a higher risk because you're renting out to kids, but um, the money to me, I feel like it's almost guaranteed because their parents are the ones signing the lease um, and stuff like that with them. So their parents are the one paying, you're going to get the money. And I mean, there might be a little bit more damage to the home, but they're college kids. They really could care less. They, they just want somewhere to sleep, somewhere to live and live. They just want to be living their best life. So, and you're charging by room. So I thought that was really good. But that auction ended up getting out of hand, honey. Like when I tell you, that auction 
it just went up. <laughs> And I was bidding, but at some point my realtor even texted me because it was live and she could see that I was bidding. I had to, I entered her in as my real estate agent. So if I did buy the home, she can get credit for it. And she texted me, she was like, Miriam, <laughs> I'm gonna need you to just stop because what I wasn't, what I didn't realize at the time, when you're purchasing a property, they try to give you as much information as possible. So I saw what the previous year's taxes was for 2019, but in my head, I'm like, okay, the taxes is really low. Not that low, because in Jersey taxes is high, but in my head, I'm like, okay, the taxes are low. So this is what my taxes would be for the year. This is what the house would be. But the more you pay for the house, them taxes go up. So whatever I see now is not gonna pertain to me once I buy the house for X, Y, and Z up, 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 up there. So she texted me, she was just like, you know, just give up. This guy, there was another guy that I was going back and forth with. So that was the first property I placed an offer on. The second property I placed an offer on, um, they actually were already in attorney review. So this was the second time I met with her the following week. We saw this house. We saw about seven houses the second time. And this particular property that I was interested in, they were still showing it because they were in attorney review. That basically means they already accepted an offer from somebody. Um, but if that offer was to fall through, and so they basically have me as a backup offer. So the first offer actually ended up going, so I didn't get that house. Um, and then the third time I w met with her, I actually saw two properties I was interested in. So these two properties I saw on the same day. So the one that I didn't get, just to give you some information about that, we walked in and it smelled bad. Bad. We saw like three or four cat litters. So the person had cats. Um, and I think the current homeowner was like in the hospital or something, but the house wasn't clean. Now, you know, like when you go to a house, the house is like clean or it's either like empty. No, there was stuff everywhere. Like some doors, we couldn't even access the back door from the inside of the house because it was just that much stuff just blocking the door. The bedroom was, the bed was still there. Vanity was still there. Clothes were still in the closet. So, and they're selling this property as is. So if I was to buy that property, basically I would need to hire a crew, get a dumpster, rent out a dumpster and just get all this stuff out of the house. My shoes were sticking to the floor with each step. I had to like, like tug my foot off of the floor because there was a sticky substance. I really think it was maybe cat pee. It smelled really bad. So when I saw the house, I was just like, mm, let's get out. I'm not really even feeling this property because I had already saw the, the house that I did end up buying before this one. So I was just like, let's just go. like, at this point I'm tired, I wanna go home. My husband was like, ugh, smells bad. But as we're leaving, and I'm saying goodbye to Layla and stuff like that, and I'm telling her, let's place the offer and how much we plan placing the offer for, we noticed that the house next door to the house that I'm seeing had a for sale sign up too. So Layla was like, hey, let's see how much this house is going for. So she put the address in, <laughs> and we saw that the property that was for sale next to the property that I actually went to go see that I was considering was for sale for three times more. Did you hear what I just said? It was for sale for three times more. So what does that mean is, and then we saw the pictures, um, it was still outdated. Like this house that was going for sale for, for three times more was still very outdated. So then <laughs> light bulbs started going off in my head and I started to think, hey, I could get this, this house for under market value put make it nice i wasn't even thinking about turning this in rental i was thinking about turning this just flipping this particular property it was in a really nice neighborhood very quiet it had a huge back it was like a nice size backyard a long driveway you could probably park maybe three four cars along the driveway and it had a garage i was just like yes i was like you know what layla let's go back in the house and take another look once i saw the number on this other house i was like let's go back in and take another hook and that's another thing you have to take the emotion out of it like there there should be no emotion connected to a real estate investment property it's a business and you have to treat it as a business and coming in from buying my home you know that's a little bit of emotion involved because my kids are going to live here i'm going to live here my husband's going to be here so you want everything to be perfect you want this to be knocked down you want this to be open space that's not the case with these properties you're just trying to do the bare minimum make the property look pretty and get you a tenant and start making your coins. And that's another thing. Like I will walk into these properties like, okay, I could like knock down this wall and we could put an island up in this area over here. And we about to just put stainless steel appliances. And you know, it's like, 
how much money are you putting into this property? You have to do the numbers and make sure you get a good return on your investment. So when I tell you every dollar that I'm spending on the property, I'm entering into my Excel spreadsheet. I wanna know the end dollar amount I spent from the purchase of the house, from the inspections, from the contractors, from the rehab, you know, from getting the certificate occupancy, all of that stuff. And I wanna see return on my investment. So I already did um, all the numbers beforehand and you really need to do that um, before you even make an offer. Make sure, you know, you're plugging in the purchase price, make sure you're plugging in um, you know, the property tax and stuff like that to make sure you're making a good return on investment. So that's what you need to really think about when you are um, buying an investment property and take the emotion out of it. It's hard, but you have to, <laughs> you just have to. So I placed an offer on that property. Now we saw this property like within 24 hours of it being on the market. Okay. Seven other offers. So I placed an offer for below asking price, not that low below, but it was below asking price. And the agent called up, my agent and was just like, just to let you know, there's seven other offers on this property. Property hasn't even been on the market for like one full day. And that's what I really didn't understand. I thought it was a good time to buy a house just because, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic. I'm thinking, you know, not many people are buying a house. Boy, was I wrong. When I tell you these houses are flying off the shelves, like hotcakes, like, flying off the shelves i lost the first house in, at an auction where there was like i think 17 other bidders 17 other bidders i think it's 17. then i and the auction was for one week long so within that one week span every day you got new bidders coming in coming in for that house that was on the auction so the second house they already had an offer in the third house seven offers within 24 hours of being on the market. And this is a house that I was like, you know, I was like, mm, I don't really think, mm, nah, mm. seven other offers. So there's several other people interested in this property within a day. And I know seven people didn't see this property because we were there on the first day that it was on the market. There was no other, there was nobody there. So how is it that seven other offers are on the property? But it's a really good city, very quiet neighborhood. Um, school district is actually good as well. So it's not like a bad school district. So people look at that stuff. We actually got a chance to talk to the neighbor. She was a really nice person. She said she lived there for two years and she really liked the neighborhood and it just had a lot of potential. So I ended up putting in another offer. So I re, I took the offer that I placed that was below market. Once we got the information that there were seven other offers, I placed the offer above asking price, $5,000 above asking price. Your girl still didn't get it. There was still another person that purchased the property higher. But then, you know what? After doing, uh, after speaking to Layla, we found out that um, there was a possible oil tank below the property. So although, like, I, in the moment, I was just like, yo, I can make so much money. I could do this. And maybe I don't have to put that much into it. I mean, it's one thing when you're doing cosmetic stuff, you know, putting new cabinets in, getting new appliances and stuff like that. But it's one thing, if there's a possible oil tank below the property, that's like a whole nother ball game. And I don't really think that's something that you wanna get into with your first investment property because that soil is contaminated. That's like hazardous waste. It's not, they need to special equipment to test the soil and that soil can't just go in any dumpster. It has to go in like special dumpsters. It has to be, you know, going to special hazardous waste places. And guess who's paying for all that? You are. And it's like, this stuff is not going to the house. It's not like you're spending money on like cabinets or like tile that you're gonna actually see. No, it's going into something below the house that you have to take care of because you own that land, you own that property. So, you know, in the beginning I was like, oh, I really want the property, I'm mad, this is the third property. But then I was just like, you know what, everything happens for a reason. I don't want that headache, I really don't. Like, there was potential to make a really nice profit, but imagine that person, and when you're buying these properties, you're buying as is. So you, it's not really attractive when there's seven other offers and you come in here talking about, well, can I get an inspection? I want an inspection. These people are gonna go with the offer that's lower than yours that doesn't have any inspection contingency. So you gotta think about that too. So it's like, go hard or go home. So I didn't get that property. The property that I did end up getting, there was one other offer, of course. When I tell you these houses are flying like hotcakes, you would think we're in the middle of a pandemic, people are not buying homes. But then when you think about it, 
Um, a lot of people are working remote. A lot of people don't need to be in the city. They don't want to be in the city in the middle of this pandemic. They're not trying to catch, you know, this 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 virus out there. So people are moving out, moving away. People are moving their family into homes where, you know, they're not like in a building and there's all these other people. What I did was I placed a strong offer. This was my fourth home. I was very tired. At this point, driving back and forth, you know, an hour and a half. And some of the homes we were looking at was like an hour and 40 minutes away from me, like almost two hours. So like I'm driving almost two hours to get to the property. Then we're looking at like five, six properties. Then I'm driving like almost another two hours to get back home. And then like, I'm a mom of four. So then like once the kids come home, that's when the real work starts. So then I'm taking care of them, helping this one with homework, bath time for this one, giving this one dinner. It was just a lot. So I just wanted to get over the home searching phase. I wanted to just find a house, buy it, and let's move on. Let's move on. At this point, like I'm just, I was just tired. So go hard or go home. I made it a very strong offer. So when I say strong offer, I made it a two week close. Um, I made it an all cash deal. That means no lenders are getting involved. There's like when lenders are involved, there's a lot of paperwork. They want to appraise the home. They want to make sure it's livable. None of that. I waived my inspection contingency. So for example, the house that I'm in now, we had an inspection done. So you get the inspection done, the inspector tells you, you know, little issues with the foundation and stuff like that. And what you do is you negotiate that in the deal. So you either have the buyer of the home take care of the problems that arise when you did the inspection or you negotiate that in the deal. So whatever the expenses would be, they will take that out of the purchase price and you move on. So I waive my inspection contingency with this property just because I wanted to make my deal that much stronger. There was one other offer. The second or the third day that I hit the market and there's already one other offer. I was over it. So I made a very strong deal. Some people might be against, you know, not doing the inspection. I went with my gut. I was loving the vibes of this home. When I saw the pictures, it spoke to me. I told my husband, like, this is the property. Like, I, I have a feeling like this is it. And I saw the property and I was really happy with it. Now, granted, it's very ugly. It's like n nothing pretty to look at, but it's in a really nice neighborhood. Transportation is close by, very quiet, upcoming neighborhood. Um, right across the street from the house that I bought, there's nothing but brand new brownstones. Like when I say brand new, I don't mean like they were built in 2020, but they were built like within maybe less than 20 years ago. And that's new. Two days later, um, Layla texted me like, hey, our offer was accepted. And at this point, like I was so discouraged because every time I place an offer in the house, she's like, oh, they went with another offer or, oh, you didn't get the auction. At this point, I was just like, am I, is it ever going to happen? You know, like when you like, you already like dream something, like you're like, like you're telling yourself, oh, I got this. And then you place the offer and you're praying and you know, I talked to my husband about it, talked to my dad about it, talked to my mom about it, and then I didn't get it. You know what that does to you? Well, to me at least, it's not a good feeling. So when I finally got that text, she was just like, ooh, they sent in the contracts over, you about to sign these contracts, you know what I'm saying? And I was so happy. I was so souped. It was just like one step closer to where I wanted to be. Like I, I wanted this property, it spoke to me, I prayed on it. And I keep telling myself, you know, what's meant to happen will happen. Everything happens for a reason. And I get the proper beat and I was so happy. Ooh. Let's go to Megan. Next question. How long did the process take? So the process took two weeks. So basically what happens after um, you place an offer and the offer is accepted? You sign the contract. The buyer signs the contract. Your agent signs it. The seller's agent signs the contract. And it gets, all of that information gets sent to the title company of my choosing. So I sent it to the title company. Um, and basically what the title company does is their job is to um, basically research the property, make sure there's no liens on the property, make sure like the buyer, you know, they paid all their bills. Like there's no like electricity, outstanding bills, any outstanding water bills. Cause once this property is now transferred into my name, it needs to be transferred with a clean slate. So I, I pay, actually pay for the tax property taxes for the remainder of the year. So there should be no bills. Like it needs to be clear, like it needs to be like no funny business going. That is what the title company does. There's no funny business. Make sure that the, it's a clean title. It took them about 10 days to do that. 
And then closing day came around on November 12th. Ooh, I'm so happy. Ooh. How was this purchase different than the purchase of my residence? It was really different. I mean, the purchase of our primary residence, basically we got a, we had to get a mortgage on it. I mean, that was too expensive to be doing any cash deals. Okay, it was really expensive. So um, we got a mortgage on this property, had an inspection done. I didn't have an inspection done on the investment property. Um, and when you give me a mortgage, the lender wants to make sure you're not overpaying for the home. So they actually have their own appraiser come appraise the house. Um, and make sure you're not overpaying and make sure like the house is actually worth what you're paying for it. One of the differences is when I was purchasing my prim primary residence and I got a loan on it, the uh, lender, they're doing their due diligence on you and making sure you are who you say you are. So in the beginning, you get a pre-approval letter. So they do like, they check your credit and they make sure like they look at your, your pay stubs, make sure you make what you say you make. But now that they're about to actually give you the loan, they're checking your credit score again and make sure that didn't change. They're checking proof of income. Um, so they want to see pay stubs. They want to see tax statements. They're calling your employer to make sure you actually work there for as amount of time that you say you're working there. Like they're doing their due diligence on you. When you're purchasing a property cash, they don't care about a credit score. Like no one asks for my credit score. No one asks for proof of employment or anything like that the only thing they care about is proof of funds that, that you could afford the house that you're trying to buy and that's basically it i didn't get an attorney for this investment property just because we have the title company and the attorney is just making sure like they're representing you i know how to read so i decided to just read all those contracts any questions i had i would ask the title the title company they were really good with answering those questions so i just opted out of it's very common for investors who are buying properties not to use attorneys and I decided not to use it. I'm trying to save these coins for this rehab, okay? <laughs> Final question. What's the next step now that I close? So basically I'm in the process of finding a contractor um, to do the rehab. The home does need a lot of like cosmetic work and you're gonna see a video of the home. That's actually gonna be the next video that I post. So stay tuned for that. Uh, another video about the contractor process will be coming up soon so any questions that you have that i didn't answer please put it down in the comment section below any pros and cons of buying a home in new jersey i think the biggest con of buying a home in new jersey would just be the property taxes are ridiculously high i actually use a crm tool on biggerpockets.com it looks i mean these numbers are looking really good so of course things change um you know i might go over on the rehab budget or under i actually paid a little bit more for the property than i expected to just because you know there were other offers on the property but i plugged all those numbers in so i'm still in the green so so that would be my con and a pro for me is just like it's within distance like if i want to see my property all i gotta do is drive an hour and 20 minutes and I can touch her, I can feel her, I can see her. You understand what I'm saying? The, any tips that I have for someone looking to get into real estate? Research the market that you're looking to get to get into. Every market is different. Even though New York is really close to New Jersey, it's a totally different market. Speak to real estate agents in that market um, and just do your due, due diligence. Even though like there's high rewards, there's always risk with anything that you do. So you just got to do your research. It's a lot of money involved. That's it for today's video. I hope you guys liked the video. I hope I answered all of your questions. I added some questions in there as well that I thought would be very helpful. Um, so please like, comment, and subscribe. Please share the video with anyone that you think um, would enjoy the video as well. Um, and if you have any more questions that you want me to answer, put it in the comment bar below. Next video is going to be coming up soon and I'll go ahead and answer it in that video. So don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much and we'll see you on the next video. Bye!